Hi, I'm Sarah Bloomfield. I think I know some of you, but not all of you. Uh, welcome to our museum. I think you've been here a while. I hope you had a meaningful day here and at your conference. It's a great honor to have you here, and I hope it's, you've been here many times and will be here in the future. Um, Diane asked me just to come and say a few parting words to you. Um, I think you know this is our 25th anniversary year. We're reflecting back on what we learned in 25 years. And at this particular moment in the history of this institution and the world we live in, what does the next 25 years bring for us? Um, and the words that come to mind is really the nurturing of critical thinkers. It's always been our, the goal of our educational work. And I think if we look the world around us, this is the kind of thinking we need more than ever for people to leave this museum and not think, oh, this was sad and terrible, and I hope it never happens again, but to really start asking themselves a whole set of new questions about their own role in society. And so you'll see some shifts here in the institution over the coming years, um, not just on the facts of how the Holocaust happened, but really on the why it happened, what made it possible, and some of the big ideas that we see in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, not only in Europe and in America, that made it possible and that were shaping decisions um, both at the political level and at the very personal level. Um, I, we all know we live in an era where social trust is declining, trust in institutions is declining, and we've been asking ourselves, well, what is the role of history in a moment like this? And maybe we're fooling ourselves, but we'd like to think that history is a way to ask people to step out of the present and the cell phone and go back and slow down a little bit and think about something new or think about something that's not new, but think about it differently. And we see a very unique role for history and for museums in this moment. We're still kind of sorting out what that means. Uh, I know we all want to be relevant. Everybody is, is, is putting that question before uh, themselves. The worry is, uh, how do you stay true to who you are? And how do you keep your rigor? And how do you really educate people for a more constructive fu future uh, and be relevant without losing that? Um, and I think there's a lot of dangers down that path. The other worry that I have for our institution is that we are really only speaking to the converted, that most people who walk through these doors or participate in our programs uh, already share a lot of our convictions. And how do we reach out and speak to people who don't think about the issues we deal with every day? Um, there's a lot of people in this country whom I think we could reach and resonate with and we just have to figure out how to reach them. Because we feel that we can create a different kind of conversation and a safe conversation that history, particularly Holocaust history, because of its extremes, um, enables people to have. So I would just say this is a huge opportunity for us as museum professionals, huge. Um, it's the, we're at the beginning of some kind of enormous revolution, social change, whatever in our country and the world. Uh, we don't know where we're going, but to me, museums and history are a place to help people have the discussion about where we've been and how that can help us navigate a very uncertain present and future. So um, it's really going to be a time of experimentation and learning for all of us, and uh, I hope we can learn from each other uh, with our successes, and as I believe, your best learning really often sometimes comes from your failures, but we all have to be willing to try. So thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to opportunities to work with you in the future. Okay, um, we have a few minutes. Sarah, thank you so much. We, again, are so grateful to be here. This is such a perfect partner for us. Um, it's been a long journey. We've been on a big journey together over the last few days, 
and there's a lot of information that um, has been put in front of us, a lot of tremendous conversations, a lot of amazing speakers and case studies. We came here on Sunday. Um, we opened with a conversation um, with our, our conference chairs of um, how did we frame this theme? Why did we decide to take this on in this time and place? We looked at the question of bravery. And you know, I bet three days ago that looked different than it does now, and it should. And we went on to talk about difficult histories and to realize that we have no other choice but to contend with them now. We had our charge from Senator Cardin that, that we must step up, that, um, that there are allies for us in this work, important, important allies for us in this work. They are not going to turn their backs on us. Um, yesterday, we heard about our responsibilities for saving cultural property at risk. What does it mean? What is our responsibility in navigating the stories of Israel? What does it mean when we broke into our talking circles to talk about these, these painful issues, these challenges that we know we can meet better together. Uh, today we heard tremendous examples of work in the field from hearing how design can help us find solutions to hearing about the dynamic work going on around the country and our wonderful closing panel on what does response look like. And what I've realized is that um, when we are alone at our desks back at home, that it seems incredibly daunting to face many of these challenges, but I hope we've given you the chance to see that the work is being done. It is moving forward with or without us, so it's time for us to step up to that. And so I've asked our conference chairs to um, come and each give us some thoughts um, to take away. Marcia. Well, frankly, after hearing from our Sarahs and our Aaron, I have very little to add, but I wanted to just make three points. One is that over the last couple of days, we've heard many examples of effective engagement with pressing social issues and social justice issues, leading to and going hand in hand with not only uh, increases and strengthening of your reputations as a museum, increases in visitation, and financial benefits. So that this idea that if you go in one direction, you're somehow going to jeopardize all these other directions needs to be questioned, I think, because we've had examples of the opposite happening. The second is that key to all of this is the importance of relationships. And again, our, our three last speakers spoke to this eloquently. And those relationships are relationships across and within and among your staff, uh, with between staff and board, and with it oftentimes new and maybe unusual partners, and above all, with your community. And so each one of you will have a different set of relationships that you're developing based on the needs, aspirations, and interests of your communities. And the last thing I wanted to say is that we've heard many cautions against our tendency too often in our museum sector for self-censorship, for cutting us off from issues and ideas and explorations too soon based on a fear that when we explore and build these relationships is not necessarily well grounded. I think I'll end with a quote that I've found inspiring in my work. It's by Andre Gide. And he wrote, well, this, there are many different English translations of his French. One cannot discover new oceans without the courage to lose sight of the shore. So the shore may be a lot of traditional museum work, but we've seen many examples of people who are either paddling their way across the ocean or they've reached the new shore. Thank you. I've sent myself 16 emails over the last few days, which is a testament to my inadequate note-taking skills, 
um, but also to how much I've learned from all of you. So thank you, and I just wanted to offer a concluding thought, um, which is inspired by a quote that Kinshasa Conwell shared yesterday in her talk, um, quoting Rabbi Avram Yoshua Heschel, who said, our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Everything is phenomenal, everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. For Heschel, this amazement is rooted in his theology of redemption, but in our work in museums, we are constantly, and I think sometimes painfully, aware of how delicate every object is, how tenuous every story is, and every life is. And so I think there's actually inherent in our work, in the work of all museum professionals, whether a registrar or curator or educator, a daily experience of radical amazement. The wonder at the story an object can tell or the interpretation that can be offered by a new visitor um, to an exhibition, which is to say that I think that we all as Cajun members can't help but experience the phenomenal world as fragile and thus as incredible. Over the last three days, I hope that we have given you some ideas and tools for channeling your amazement. I hope that we've pointed to some ways that you can be not just attuned to the intellectual, political, social, and ethical trends and challenges of the moment, but also to set the pace as agents of change. Whether that's on the Hill later today, or in your offices or galleries later this week, I hope that you keep in mind the amazing power and responsibility that you have and that we have together to reconstitute the world. Thank you. Um, in the spirit of not having anything left to say that hasn't already been said. I'm gonna just read just a couple quotes that I've taken pictures of over the course of the last few days, which I found especially powerful, and um, I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna think about them for a while, and I caution you that I'm probably gonna leave you with uh, a lot of, nothing concrete at the end of my, my few words. Um, on the concept, and, and these will, some of these will be very familiar, because they were from today, on the concept of the contexts that we have been talking about setting from this morning's plenary. Here's what we realize. The solution isn't an app or a box or a calendar or a site or a widget or any description. It is all of those things and more, and it needs to begin with a profound and inalienable sense of welcoming. We have talked about how we will go forth and create these types of contexts. And I will tell you from yesterday's panel uh, discussing Israel, I walked away having conversations with people about how we can come together as dear friends, as colleagues who have incredible amounts of respect for one another and have conversations about topics about which we completely disagree um, and have these be fruitful. On the topic of what we are here to do, what is the great opportunity? Teaching humans to be human on our work. Our jobs uh, is indeed to help people to realize their full potential of humanity. And I think that if there's anything that we have taken away from this uh, the last few days, it is that indeed we have the capacity to do this and we are feeling, at least I feel that many of us feel that we are at an inflection point where we are moving toward um, the profound gravity of that idea. The role of the artist culture worker is to make revolution irresistible. Um, the, the sense that ultimately our job is to tantalize, create moments that tantalize people to act, to think differently, to do something. And finally, a quote which you did not see in this conference, um, but I think for me gets us um, in the direction, at least the direction that I, I, I might have mentioned uh, in our opening. It was a sign that I uh, noticed at a, a, a recent um, gathering of people protesting something, uh, somebody exercising their First Amendment right. This is the moment I trained for in Hebrew school. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Zachary. First of all, I'd like us all to give a round of applause to our conference chairs, to our wonderful co-presenters at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. And just in saying goodbye, we know there is a lot of bad news in the world these days, but there is good news, and I think we have found it here, um, that in some of our most challenging moments, I have turned to colleagues and have said, we have never been more needed. And I genuinely believe that is true, that we are the gatekeepers to lessons, to resources, to knowledge, and to questions that people are hungry for. This is an incredibly important moment for us. And so there is an incredible opportunity here for us to move forward. We heard today from Sarah at Sites of Conscience. We are the Council of American Jewish Museums. What does it take for our network to really step up to this challenge? And so at Cajun, we are committed to working with you, to making your work at home more relevant, and to finding ways that we can be stronger together. So I hope that is a exciting challenge for all of us. Please be active partners with us in this work. It means real partnership. It means real work. Um, but I promise you it will be fruitful. Thank you.